Well, hello and welcome to the Jaguar Design Studio in Gaydon, Warwickshire, and to Jaguar Racing Season 8 launch. We're coming to you from an exclusive location today because this is the very room that the next generation of Jaguars are brought to life. I'm Darren Adetossier. I'm Zonda CB. Now, last season was Jaguar Racing's most successful season in the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship, finishing runners up in the team championship. There was also more than a few memorable moments on track, including that team first double podium in Rome. And of course, going into the final race, both drivers, Mitch and Sam, were still in contention for the driver's title. Now, we'll be talking to Mitch and Sam a little bit later about that season, the ups, the downs, and also how they're preparing for the next season of Formula E. Um, and also, we'll be talking about what's new in this Jaguar I-Type 5 race car. You might also have noticed those keen eyes Slight change to the team logo behind us. Now we'll be talking more about that later because it is a very exciting announcement. Yes, there is indeed. We'll also be speaking to the team who helped make Jaguar Racing so successful and we'll be welcoming some new faces and incredible partners to the world's first all-electric world championship. But for now, let's take a look at that special, incredible season seven. Welcome to the stage, the team principal of Jaguar Racing and managing director of Jaguar Land Rover Motorsport, James Barkley. <laughs> James, how enjoyable was it to watch back those moments from last season, you know, especially given the journey that you and the team have been on for the past five seasons, essentially building up a team from scratch to, you know, competing for world championships in arguably the most competitive field in motorsports. Oh, well, thank you. And firstly, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, really wonderful to welcome you here to the heart of our, our design centre. Um, I think, absolutely, when, you, when I look back at this film, for myself and the team that are here in the room, you know, it's, uh, it's very emotional, but very rewarding, especially when you know how much hard work has gone into creating really a, a world-class performance unit that we now have with the team. And uh, yeah, to, to be able to celebrate those moments of success is really, is really something else. But it's what we, we live and breathe and, and we, we drive for. Absolutely. And how much are you and the team looking forward to next season? Yeah, I think it's fair to say we're ready to go. The race drivers, even in their overalls, you'll see in a minute. So they're, they're definitely ready. And you know, we, you know, we've really been getting ourselves really prepared and, and ready. And I think for us, um, it's the preparations since Berlin. We're already obviously stuck into that work as we speak right now. But it's a really exciting season ahead. We have a number of new sporting regulations that come into the new season. So good example, firstly, being a new qualifying format, which is really designed to make sure the best teams, the best drivers can really compete for race wins time in and time out. And formerly to date has had a qualifying format which allowed for a bit of uncertainty. But now as a championship, as a sport, we're at a point where we can, we can let the best teams and drivers really race it out. So that's been really, really key. And in addition, we have some new race regulations as well. Firstly, we have more power in race mode, and we have extended time, a bit like football, so if we have any stoppages. So those changes coming together means I think we have a really exciting season where you're going to see literally the best teams, the best drivers going head to head in what will be, I'm sure, an even closer championship again. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, James. Sounds like there's some really positive things coming in the future. Before we move on, Darren, am I right in thinking that your entire Formula E journey started with Jaguar Racing? That is correct. Um, so I came into Formula E through winning their Open Talent Call um, and whilst I was shortlisted, went to pre-season testing in Valencia, um, which the first thing I ever did was a social media takeover for Jaguar, which is so much fun. Um, and it meant that James, you were the first team principal I met, Sam and Mitch were the first drivers I met, Jaguar was the first garage which I stepped into, and what a way to start my time at Formula E. Such a welcoming experience, and so yeah, to be here today is such a full circle moment. Absolutely. A good season to start with as well. The season we had last year still blows my mind. Let's take a look at how it unfolded. We're just north of the Saudi Arabian capital of Riyadh as we get ready to light up Diria at the opening round of the ABB FIA Formula E World Championship. Here comes Mitch Evans attacking Rast. Evans gets the inside and the Jaggy was up into third place. The car was, was incredible. Bird up the inside of Frights coming into the chicane. Yes! Jaguar moved to the top. We go green in Rome. Bird with a brilliant move. Superb stuff from the British driver. Head down, feel the grip. 
Oh, that's a bold one. Mitch Evans, Jaguar are over the moon with a second and third place finish. That's their first ever double podium. Sam Bird is at the top. He is just four points ahead of his teammate, Mitch Evans. Jaguar first and second in the standings. And the first ever DHL Valencia E Prix. Mitch Evans gets the race underway. The arse to come from the back to the front on such an energy focused track was ultimately probably a step too far for us today. But we'll learn from that, we'll take it away, and the team already will be really motivated to get back to racing in what's going to be a fantastic Monaco E Prix in just two weeks' time. After 93 years of history, the full Monaco Grand Prix circuit plays host to the Monaco E Prix. And we go green in Monaco. Let's chase him. He's going for it now. Oh, what a move. Evans up through Beau Rivage, takes the lead of the Monaco E Prix. Absolutely outrageous stuff from the Kiwi. An unreal end to the E Prix. Evans in third. Bird got up into seventh place. Beautiful day in New York City. Bird crashed in free practice one. The team had to change the chassis, basically build a new car up from scratch. All five lights are on. And we go green in New York City. And that's an aggressive move from Mitch Evans in the Jaguar. Bird is up in the ninth place with one of his drives of his career, I would have to say. Delighted to say that we've got some points out of a very, very difficult day. P9 and fastest lap. Great result, really, starting from P20 to make up 11 places. Thank you, Jaguar Racing, and we'll push on tomorrow. <laughs> The 2021 ABB New York City E Prix with the two Jaguar Racing drivers on the front row, Mitch Evans ahead of Sam Bird, who's on pole. All five lights are on, and we go green in New York City. Good start from Bird. Evans walks up. The Jaguar of Mitch Evans is in second position. Mega lap, last lap was mega. Jaguar boys, 1-2, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. Bird leads, Evans second. Evans has suddenly dropped down to fourth. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. Bring it home, mate, bring it home. A lights to flag victory. Checker flag falls. Sam Bird and Jaguar win in New York City. Yeah! Well done, Jaguar Racing. I'm so, so proud of everybody for rebuilding that car. We had 29 points out of a possible 30. Couldn't be more happy and delighted and proud of my team. So well done, Jaguar. Formula E is set to electrify the streets of London. And we go green in London. Evans dummies him coming into turn 10. Beautiful stuff from Mitch Evans. Yes, yes! That's B3. We're in the hunt and we're going to Berlin fighting. Berlin, Germany, the capital city. Great move from Mitch Evans, worked that beautifully. And there comes Sam Bird. Where on earth has Bird come from? This has already been Jaguar's most successful Formula E season. We put ourselves into a position to fight for the drivers and team's world championships. And that's something we are all proud of. It's also testament to the quality of this team and all the hard work we have put into the season. Most importantly though, we finished second in the team's championship, our highest ever finish. And we look forward to coming back next year, even stronger and even hungrier. Fantastic stuff there. Welcome to the stage, Sam Bird, Mitch Evans. Good to have you. How are you both? Very well, thank you. Good, thanks. Good. Yeah, it's great to see you. And wow, what a season. Let's start off with that opening weekend in Dira. I mean, it had its highs and lows, but you both managed to score points. Um, and for you, Sam, you obviously took your first win for Jaguar. Uh, so talk us through what that weekend was like for you. So firstly, good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to have you here with us to, to showcase our, our new car, which will be really, really cool for you to see. The first weekend for me uh, in Diria last year was, it was quite tough. It was my first weekend with my new team. Um, quite a lot of expectation upon my shoulders coming from somewhere else where I'd been quite, uh, quite successful. And to immediately be successful with Jaguar was so important. It was a massive weight off my shoulders. Maybe day one wasn't the best, but day two certainly to get the win was massive for me. Mitch, what would you say some of your highlights were from last season? Yeah, there were a few. Um, obviously, got five podiums, which was great. Um, I think the double, the double podium with me and Sam was, was pretty special. And I think um, the podium in, in London, you know, it was, it was the first race for, for Jaguar and home soil. So um, yeah, it was there was many memories, and, and hopefully many more next next season. 
Yeah, and Sam, for you, obviously your highlight must have been New York City, where you took your second win. Um, but that weekend also had some ups and downs, didn't it? Third win. But okay. don't worry, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, who's counting? Um, yeah, very, very special. To be honest, though, I think for me, the win in Deria, the first win, my first win for Jaguar was a very special moment. But, yeah, New York was special because, if you guys aren't aware, unfortunately, I crashed very heavily on day one. And the job that the team did and how magnificent Jaguar Racing were in rebuilding my car and how we bounced back to then win the following day shows the resilience of Jaguar Racing and shows how good a team we really have. It was a good season for sure, and you seem to fit in very well with the new team, uh, Jaguar, especially with your race engineer, Bill Ingram. I would say that's a unique relationship that you had there. Um, I would love to take a look at some examples. You're not just a pretty face, Phil. No, I'm definitely not a pretty face. We're like genetic opposites, aren't we? God did some work when he made me, mate. Stop flirting, you two. What does it look like? Does it look absolutely horrific? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. There's lots of uh, standing water puddles. I know you like driving these, Phil. I mean, do you want to swap? You can do the driving and I'll stay dry. Oh, I had a bit of a crisis through turn six. I think I need to check my underwear. There's quite a lot of brown trousers here as well. Thank God I'm wearing green pants today, not the white ones like yesterday. Let's welcome to the stage Phil Ingram. Quite the bromance the two of you have. Um, but how important is it to work closely together and have that relationship? Oh, hi there, yeah, it's, it's super important. The relationship uh, uh, between, between me and Sam, obviously that's uh, how good that relationship is, it affects how well we perform. As you can see, we like to have a laugh as well. I think um, we both perform at our best when we relax. So obviously there's times to be serious and there's times to be relaxed and uh, we take every opportunity we can. Um, yeah, I've been working with Sam in his first year at Jaguar. He's, he is such a professional. Um, you know, he, he pushes himself really hard. He pushes us really hard. Um, when we get everything dialed in correctly, you know, he, he can really deliver. So it's, it's really good and uh, hopefully the banter will continue. Um, he's pretty sharp at it, and I have to play catch up quite a lot, but um, I'm working on it. Love it, good to hear. Uh, now, looking forward, as a race team, Jaguar boasts four victories, 14 podiums, and 63 races in their Formula E history. And because they've used Formula E as a real world test bed, they've been able to develop cars like the multi award winning all electric Jaguar I Pace. But that start to the all electric journey is only the beginning, looking into season eight. Time to reveal the brand new iType 5. James, welcome back to the stage, and Amit Kapoor from Tata Consultancy Services. Thanks for joining us. James, first of all, great to see the new livery, of course, but TCS branding on it as well. How exciting is it to welcome a new team partner to the team? Well, firstly, it's a, it's a real honour. You know, a company like TCS choosing to join us is, is fantastic, and what's really great is we, you know, we believe we have a really fantastic foundation for a really innovative and successful partnership together. The fact that we both share the same vision is, is really, really important. And 
We're going to be driving for, for race and championship successes together. But importantly, we both believe in the power of purpose-driven sport and the power that sport has to drive change, and that's really at the heart of this, this, this partnership. Amit, welcome. Um, what attracted TCS to Jaguar Racing and Formula E specifically? I think uh, when you reflect back on the values of uh, what motorsport stands for, especially Formula E, I think two elements of values come out very clearly, innovation and sustainability. And both are so core to everything that we do in our business, in our life, in our society. And that's what clearly excited us. So why was it so important to partner with Jaguar uh, for TCS? So we've been uh, strong partners with each other since 2012. It's, it's been a partnership which is built on trust. It's a partnership which has stood the test of times. And uh, there's always new and exciting things ahead. And this was one of those threads. And we said that the relationship can be taken to a very different level, in a very different sphere with the endurance that motorsports has. So, easy choice. Excellent stuff. And James, of course, there are many returning partners as well um, for the next upcoming season. Can you talk us about the importance of those partners' roles? Yeah, absolutely. And TCS joined a fantastic roster of, of sponsors um, who really are helping us race to innovate, the likes of Dow, GKN Automotive, Castrol, Microfocus, to name a few. So, really, we're driving change, we're developing new technology, innovating together, but at the heart of it, obviously, with a, with a common goal, and that's about winning races and, and ultimately fighting at the front of a, of a world championship. In addition to that, I was also really proud that our long-term partner, Alpine Stars, and our race apparel stays with us. And importantly, we have a, a new partner in a company called Uncommon, who are gonna be producing our team apparel, but slightly differently, because we'll be using recycled materials for our team clothing. So really, again, aligned with our vision of creating a world-class team that's sustainable as well. Exciting times, great to hear. Thank you very much for, for joining us and best of luck with the season. It'll, it'll be good to see how the partnership unfolds over the course of season eight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm now joined by Mitch's race engineer, Joseph Rocker. And as we're sticking on the theme of season A, I wanted to talk to you about how your approach for the team is differing this season. Because we have the new qualifying um, format and we also have the new race locations. Uh, we're going to be racing for the first time in Vancouver, in Seoul and in Jakarta. Uh, so what's that been like before preparation? Yeah, it is great to have uh, three new race venues confirmed for next season uh, with Vancouver, Jakarta and Seoul. Uh, racing in Formula E is always about balancing perfect preparation with being able to react and adapt to expect the unexpected. And with new locations, the balance obviously goes more towards the being ready to react to anything. We will have very little information ahead of those events, which makes it a great challenge, but a great excitement and a great opportunity for, every, for each one of them. Uh, this season, uh, the calendar has been announced, we'll finish off in, in Seoul, new location again, which will get, keep things exciting and challenging till the very end. So yeah, we're all set for a, for a great one. Thanks, Jason. Welcome, Phil Charles here, Jaguar TLS Racing's technical manager. Um, first question I want to ask you is about the Sam Bird, Mitch Evans duo, the partnership. How was it over the course of the season? Hi Saunders and hello everybody. Uh, so it's critical and uh, I'm really pleased to say that the two drivers work fantastically well together. Uh, and very simply in Formula E, the, the field is so tight that if you burn energy trying to race your teammate, it's most likely you'll get eaten up by another team, another driver. So our two understand that, but it's not just that. They work really well as a, as a partnership with the team as a whole. Um, by joining together, they, they put the feedback about what the car's doing and how they can make the car better if we deliver them something that, that allows them to drive the car more easily or more effectively. While you're here, let's move over to the car because I've got a few questions. Can you talk us through what's carried over from Season 7 into the Season 8 car? Well, well firstly, uh, Season 8 is the second year of a two-year homologation window. So the hardware, as James mentioned earlier, carries over. But it would be a complete injustice to say informally that because the hardware is carried over, it's likely that the results will carry over straight away from Season 7 to Season 8. And the reason you can't say that is because the software development is just absolutely ferocious. It just doesn't stop. You cannot afford to take your foot off the electrons for more than a second because someone else is, is overtaking you. Fantastic insight. Foot to electrons, I'm definitely putting that in the bank for next yeah. year. Great phrase. Um, obviously, this is the last season we'll see Gen 2 before we move into Gen 3, but that programme is being developed and run in, in simultaneously with the Gen 2 programme. Yeah, that's right. So, so our, our design team have been working now for several months on the Gen 3 car, and, and that's really progressing very, very fast. And, and you, you mentioned it already. Our car will be ready to run in around April time 
of next year, and that's right smack bang in the middle of, of season eight. So it'll be busy, we'll be going race test, race test, through a, a lot of months there, um, but we're all really excited. That Gen 3 car, 100 kilowatt more power, we've suddenly got a motor on the front of the car, so front regen, and there's a new tyre supply. So there's lots of big engineering challenges to get our teeth into, uh, and we're really looking forward to that. It's a super fast car, big step, uh, and it'll be a really, really good uh, race car to, to start to work with and understand. Nice, thanks for joining us, Phil. Now, season eight kicks off in Saudi Arabia at the, in the end of January, but as we look towards season nine and the Gen 3 race cars, which we've been talking about, it's time to reimagine racing. Powered by purpose, we electrify the world. We race to innovate. Jaguar win in New York City. We race to inspire. It is time to reimagine racing. It is time to reimagine Jaguar. It's now my pleasure to introduce Thierry Bellori, Jaguar Land Rover CEO and JLR Motorsport Chairman. Big round of applause, warm welcome. <laughs> Thierry, thanks for coming, uh, joining us, pleasure to have you here. Uh, now you've been in and around motorsport for quite a long time now, you know, notably Formula One before now, um, and now you're Chairman of Jaguar Land Rover Motorsport. So I guess the first question is, what does motorsport mean to you? Well, I think it means a lot, but it means a lot for all of us. Because when you, you see the history of the car creators and then of the car industry, not only the OEM, but also their partners, you can see that since centuries, it has been consubstantial to the evolution of, of the mobility of the cars. And most of the progresses that we can see on our cars have been developed in the past on the, because of racing. So the, the first element is that um, there is a substantial need to have a platform to develop innovation and to develop the technologies. So that's for me the, the first point of absolute attention uh, to, to what we, we are doing with uh, motorsports. I think the, the, the second one, you know, uh, beyond innovation and development of the, the technologies, is really the fact that when you race at the utmost level, because you are in real competition and you are against the best actors in the world, you, you can have a chance to win because we are doing that for winning, of course. Only if you are absolutely obsessed with any details. You cannot win if something is missing. It's impossible. It's so tight, so intense. And what we have heard today from our teams is revealing that very clearly. So intense that you, you can win only if you're obsessed with the details in, in the excellent manner, in the best manner. Great stuff, great philosophy there. Um, talking Jaguar, what can you tell us about the all-electric from 2025? Uh, precisely, it's, um, it's a fantastic project. I, I cannot reveal a lot at the moment, but I can tell you that all the team is super excited about what is getting prepared with, uh, uh, I, I would say, a startup inside our team, by the way, because we need to go very fast and we want to, to produce the best. Um, we want to make of new Jaguar, again, a copy of nothing. This is what I can share with you, and it will truly be a copy of nothing. And uh, to make it happen, it has also to be sustained by the, the best technologies, the best efficiency, uh, the best delivery of what we can offer. So far, it's really a copy of nothing, and it's really unique on the market. This is what we are in. And that's why it's so interesting to have also our big uh, motorsport team working with us on that. Gary, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much. Applause. Thank you. Now, we've come to that point of the show where I guess all that needs us to say is thank you for joining us and make sure, get it in your calendar, 28th of January is the first race of season 8. And for one final time, let's all applaud for Jaguar TCS Racing. Thank you very much. See you soon.